Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. Today is the 10th of July which is a Saturday and as you can see I am still building trusses for the rain roof. Now the good thing about this truss is it's the final one. It's the last truss to be made and um, it's taken nearly, well, four weeks to do the 36 trusses. So, and I've managed to keep you um, entertained with various videos. I mean, we've had the rail tour, and with a little help from John Kodahi, we managed to do some uh, infill videos with interviews and an update. So hopefully, once this last truss is done, we can get back to the main build and um, yeah, and continue with the roof. Um, I think I mentioned in the last video, once um, the roof is finished, um, I was hoping to start the next station, but with all the information I got from John in the previous couple of videos I'm going back to the signal box just for a weekend just to finish it off um, as you know the signal box uh, has not got sleeve levers inside um, so they can be added I have a kit for that um, the other thing we, I'm going to try and make a small bird and stick it to the handrail. Um, now that the bird, according to John, was made from wood, so uh, but it was painted black. But the paint um, had rubbed off over the years, and um, so it may have been from a previous signalman who was maybe a, a chippy or something like that and decided to um, carve a bird and then stick it onto the handrail so that'll be done. Uh, other things I want to do is probably the um, the fencing, the picket fencing that goes alongside the signal box as well and then that would probably finish that off so that's where we are with that um, it's been weird building these without the camera going um, it's felt like at times I was up here by myself because <laughs> with the camera going it feels like you guys are watching every move I make and uh, which is uh, which is weird and uh, yeah so here we are the last few bits to solder and all we have to do with these is just clean them up and try and get as much of this flux off because uh, otherwise the paint won't take Right, I think that's ready to come out of the jig and then we'll flip it over, make sure the solder has come through the other side. Yeah, I'm sorry you're watching this upside down, but uh, it's the only way for me to see that I've make sure I've got all the joints just adding a bit of flux in a few places where solder is needed yeah that's good that's good and maybe a little bit there so all I'm doing now as you've seen before I'm just 
touching up where the solder is needed. Just add strength to the frames because uh, I know they're not going to take a lot of weight. They're only going to take card and maybe a little bit of plastic strip. I'm not sure on the design yet. Now this bit on the top here, I'm just uh, trying to create a web if you like so that there's plenty of solder to go around all three. supports do nicely Right, that's done. The last one. Someone <laughs> had a comment saying that uh, these look like uh, coat hangers. Well, um, I guess they do, but uh, but um, I think they wouldn't have been uh, small enough to use, but. Uh, they do look like coat hangers. Here we have a assembly plan on how I'm going to put these trusses together. So with this piece of wood that we've got underneath, which had the uh, assembly for the trusses on one side, on the flip side, I'm going to make this jig up. So basically I'm going to screw a bit of wood across on one, one side and that will become the stop and then a series of pieces of wood right angles to the stop and then it's going to act like a toasted rack so all you have to do is just drop the trusses in and then push the trusses up against there that stop and hopefully all these top ridge angles will be perfectly in line now if there's one slightly out I can always take the truss out and clean a bit off the end to get these um, ends, corners if you like, all these apexes to line up and uh, this is what it looks like from the side view. So I'm going to screw a couple of bits of button to the underside of this piece of wood because I might need to use uh, the, the jig on the other side to make some of these trusses up. I don't know yet, just in case I'll break one or or whatever. But as you can see, we have a stop here, um, some 18mm timbers there. And then these just drop in. And then I'll show you how I assemble the trusses together once I've made the jig up. We now have our jig. Um, it's more or less the same as what you saw in the drawing. Um, the only difference being is I've added a piece of timber there to give me the distance between there and there as 170 millimeters, which is the first section of the roof. And um, right, so let's explain how this jig is going to work. So here we have a stop, and we shall drop in the trusses and push them towards me until they hit the stop. Then that should guarantee them to be in a nice straight line. So I'll have a nice straight edge on one side. So that's how it's going to work. And um, here are the trusses, all 36 of them. Um, yeah, they've been cleaned and in places the the copper coating is starting to come off 
uh, which is holding the solder together but they are quite strong so before we do any assembly um, we should look at the photographs again so we can get a good idea of um, how I'm going to put this roof together so going back as far as you can photograph wise as you can see with this photograph um, the roof is open at the top here and here as well the apex finishes right in the center and of these here I'm not sure if they're windows or not or glazing that's definitely panelling there, you can see the strips, that's definitely wooden panelling there and there and there as well and then as we move on it's fully open here and it's closed there but you can still see glazing in there just in there and here's one of the later ones where They've opened the roof right up on the apex and down the sides here and here. So I've got a varied choice of how I'm going to do this. And here's another one. Same again. Open there. And with this photograph you can see the ridges right at the top so although I used a jig to assemble these so I'm just checking to make sure I've got 197 for each one and if not I'm just gonna have to lynch them down a little bit um, depending on where this apex sits so on this one, looks like I'm going to have to take a little bit off this corner here. So that'll be the first one. So all I've done is just linish the end and then I'll drop this into the jig and push it against the stop. And then eventually I'll have all nine ready to go. We have now filled up the rack as it were with um, trusses and basically I've had to take off a little bit to get them back down to 297 so they're all the same width now. So the next thing I want to do is just check the heights of the apexes, make sure that they're all the same um, and they're not too bad. This one's a little bit high, this one here. So, what I'm gonna have to do is take that one out of the rack and just linish a little bit off here and here, not a lot, just to drop them down. Um, what I'm using is a sanding disc in a Makita drill and just taking off a little bit at a time. Now you don't need much because just by flattening it I'll probably take it down about half a mil. So I'll just put a little bit of a flat on there, so hopefully that might be enough to bring them in line. Make sure something gets the stop. And then we'll put the rule back on. And that's almost there, it's just a slight rock in there now. Not a lot talking half a millimeter we have come back to this drawing I've done some weeks back 
and uh, the first section we're going to concentrate on is this section here it measures roughly 265 millimeters from what was at the time the wall so this might change so we're going to have a look at the new measurements so like I was saying um, the measurements, measurements were taken before these fascias were made so I've got to allow um, at least 8 mil for that plus I've got to allow for the first rafter which sits about there which is roughly about 25 mil off the box section so the first rafter should start about there so if I measure that the same on this side 25 mil or thereabouts measure that off the box section so the straight starts from here and if you notice the canopy doesn't start bending till about roughly here we have marked it already so that there is the first straight as it were and it works out at roughly 295 295 and standard trusses finish there which is 235 so we've got 235 and 295 right so we'll have to work that out onto the jig and see how the jig is going to work um, yeah because we have a straight section here and then if we turn the camera around we have a little bit of a straight section towards the end of the station roughly where that canopy just about finishes here that is almost straight yeah so there so that's straight there up to about this point here 230 right so I'm gonna have to rework the drawing I have worked out how many of these trusses I need to leave as they are which is up to 235 mils worth but in order to make this jeep work once these have been soldered together we have to lift them out move them along and then drop them back in again by another two trusses which will give us uh, another 60 mil which will just take us past the canopy that we've just seen but before we do any of that I'm gonna have to modify three of these trusses so what I'm gonna have to do is chop off four millimeters off of here and as you can see I've bent a little bit of um, welding rod and I'm just going to solder that in there obviously I'll cut this bit smaller and then solder that in there because I can see what's going to happen the minute I cut through there it's going to go pitong so I'm going to have to, have to modify three of these before I can start building the roof I have now come to a decision on the roof, on the type of roof 
I'd like to make and it's this one because once the roof is on you'll be able to see through these areas and actually see the trains running in and out but I will probably glaze these areas like they were in the 60s in this photograph here but we're a long way from doing that yet right so you're probably wondering how these are going to be joined together right I have got here some 3mm by 3mm brass channel as you can see if I just show you that and I've cut it up into 18mm sections and what will happen is when I start making the roof into sections I'll just press that into there and solder it in and then the next section will come into the other side and hey pressed up we've got our joint but uh, that's going to be a long way off too so there we are that's uh, roughly two and a half mil or two and a half mil um, brass channel I think you can still get that from Squires I think that's where I got that from originally so that's where we are at the moment I've got to modify three of these for the first section then I've got to work out how many I need of these for the rest of the yeah, the offset on the canopy back on the station so it means I've got a slight modification uh, I knew this was going to happen and uh, I think I've planned for it as well so as you can see right in that corner there I've tacked a piece of wire and then what I'll do is I'll solder that wire on both sides and then I will chop off the 3mm to allow for the canopy just like the one I've done here already as you can see if I put them both side by side you can see how much I've chopped off and hopefully once it's all assembled well, the step will be very very slight and the copper wire in there will stop this from going piton right with those ends now trimmed um, this is all set and ready for the assembly which will shall start next week so uh, we've done quite well this week getting the jig done that took most of the weekend up and uh, we shall leave it there Thanks for watching now, and we'll catch you again. Bye for now. Bye.